Dutch still life and global trade in the 17th century. Let's start with this Dutch still life by, and I'm no authority on Dutch names, so please excuse me, Pieter Klees, painted in around 1637. The three main elements in this breakfast painting are all locally produced and traded. For example, that glass of beer there and that roll of fresh bread over in the corner. And then finally, that plate of herring in the front that's hanging over the table. Now, while this composition is quite simple compared to other Dutch still lifes, and the objects rather basic, all three are desirable local Dutch consumer products from major industries in the Netherlands at the time. Compare that painting with this one. It's a Spanish still life by Juan Sanchez Coten. And note the difference. The food in this Spanish painting is what anyone might grow in her backyard. While these products would be sold in local markets, they are not commodities that would be sold on the international market. Note as well that they are presented in a non-idealized fashion. Look at that lettuce. Would you buy that? It's seen better days. As if all this produce was just pulled from anyone's garden. Anyone's. Not so with Dutch still lifes. They're a totally different bird. In this painting by Van Schuten, we find products similar to the local Dutch products of the first painting we were looking at. We find that roll again of bread. In addition, we find big wheels of cheese, mm, positioned directly in back of the broken roll. And we find pats of butter in the dish in the back right-hand corner. The Dutch were known throughout Europe for their delicious dairy products, which were thus traded internationally. One of the art historians that I read in preparing for this particular part of the course noted that cheese manufactured in Holland had taken the Belgian market by storm. This painting remains focused on regional products, and the only exception I think might be that porcelain bowl that the butter's in, but I think it's too indistinct. The pattern is too indistinct to know exactly where it comes from. Is it China or could it be Dutch ceramics? You can't really tell. Now let's contrast the previous two Dutch paintings with this one by William Kleis Hedda where we find goods traded from outside the Netherlands. As you may know, if you try to grow your own food in the Pacific Northwest, lemons grow quite well in California, particularly northern, I mean, southern California, but not so much here in Portland. If you try to grow them here, they get kind of buggy during the winter when you bring them in. The same is true for the Netherlands. This lemon probably, most likely, was imported from Italy or Spain because you can't grow them in 
the Low Countries. We also, over there on that uh, left-hand corner of the painting, in the glass plate, we find oysters, not a local commodity. And most importantly, for our purposes, that rolled piece of newsprint, not tobacco, nor narcotics, but little black pepper. You know, before you grind it in your pepper grinder at home. So do you have any idea where the Dutch got their valuable pepper? Well, it probably changed depending on what time period we're talking about, but here we're looking at a map of Southeast Asia, and the green islands are modern-day Malaysia and Indonesia, and the arrows point to the path of Dutch trade routes. And you can see that at least for one part of their history that they got their pepper from this area. Now, uh, eventually their trade with the natives turns violent and they displace the native people of this area who lived there and turn some of this region into spice plantations. They also have to fight the Spanish quite a bit over this territory. The critic that I earlier referred to uh, criticized his Dutch still lives for being silent about the lives lost or ruined in the cultivation and transport of international goods by Europeans. Earlier, you'll remember I questioned the origin of that ceramic bowl that the butter was in. In contrast, this particular still life by Peter van Roostraten celebrates the tea, the chinaware, and the sugar that were imported from far-flung lands. While we've been focused on porcelain, tea, and spices from the East Dutch routes, they, those ever-present Dutch, were also involved with trade and imperial conquest in the West, the Americas, for example. And accounts of sugar production of, du of the Dutch describe, uh, this happens mostly in uh, the brief period where the Dutch uh, were in control of parts of Brazil, and I also think in the Caribbean as well, they describe a horrendous and inhumane process of uh, cultivating and manufacturing this sugar. So the Dutch would use slave labor that they would get from Western Africa to grow and process the sugar. And the heat and the factory conditions created miserable work that killed and sickened many of the slaves. So, are Dutch still lives complicit in covering up the brutality of international trade? Or, I'm wondering if some Dutch painters offer subtle critiques of Dutch society, economics, and trade. Our next short video will examine this key question, complicity or critique.